Hey, Harry, how are you doing? Hello, really good, really good. Uh, enjoying the start of the year, quite busy times, both in the studio and in, in social media, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, nice, nice. A lot of uh, good things coming, so... Um, yes, the... definitely. Let's talk about uh, Lost in Grey, because uh, the first single from the upcoming album was released uh, nine days ago, if I remember yes. well. Yeah. Uh, and it's really a good song. It's uh, seven minutes of song. And if someone uh, haven't heard yet, uh, I highly suggest to check the song out because, uh, yeah, it takes in a journey. And I think that is uh, what's your music is about taking the, the listener to a journey. Yes, it's like definitely. be in a movie. <laughs> yeah, but, you could uh, say that. Yeah, let's let's talk uh, about uh, the upcoming album Odyssey into the Grey that uh, will be released uh, in April. What can you tell? How are the main di- what are the main differences uh, compared to the previous three albums? Uh, well, I guess on every album, we try to kind of evolve our sound and take it to the kind of, so to say, next level. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think again, with this album, I think we did really good work and all, always the production seems to be, get a little bit bigger every time. And now on this album, we had, uh, Francesco Ferrini from Flesh God Apocalypse doing the orchestrations with me. So that of course helps kind of <laughs> painting a lot bigger picture in in the music and uh but yeah i i think i'm t- maybe too close to the songs so i cannot say that what have happened from let's say from the first album to this album but yeah. are they but, all connected the uh, yeah story wise uh, they are uh, Anne, our lyricist and one of the vocalists writes the whole story which already began on the first album and so in the in a way they are connected uh, but it's not a certain timeline that you go from a to b from the first album to the fourth but uh but yeah connected definitely yeah and uh you say that you work with francesco from Fre- flesh god apocalypse how did it happen this uh, this collaboration uh, did you uh, send an email to him or did you met him before uh, so how, how it worked uh, I, I actually sent him a message on Facebook <laughs> uh, because I noticed that he he was doing some uh, work with other bands also and uh, he has his own production company I think it was Midas Productions or something like that where he makes scores <laughs> yeah. so so i kind of just asked him that would he be interested and then sent him one song that he could test and listen if it would be something interesting and then he ended up doing the whole album so yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, which for i'm super happy but yeah and uh, he is really active in many projects nowadays uh, I don't yeah. know how he can find the time to do everything, but yeah, he's, he's doing a lot of things. And uh, I think that he's uh, really, um, how to say, it? Um, what's the word that I was looking for? Um, really involved uh, and really happy to do music work. Yeah. And and you can hear from from what he is doing so that's that's nice yeah definitely and uh, i think it was super super uh inspiring to work with him because he wrote some really good ideas to the songs and uh and because he's so super productive and absolute professional also i think it was one of the easiest things ever yeah <laughs> <laughs> then you have uh in the album, a lot of uh, chores uh, vocals, and um, you had this collaboration with the Swedish school of Hyvinka. Yes, uh, yes. How did you get to work with uh, with the choir from the Swedish school? 
Uh, well, I think we just asked uh, the principal that would they be interested in something like this, and they were super happy about it and glad about the idea, and then they just rehearsed in their musical classes the songs <laughs> that they're going to sing, and then we spent some maybe two, three hours uh, recording the choir, and I think the kids were happy that they wouldn't didn't have to be on some math class or something. <laughs> <laughs> That was something really nice. I think that for the kids is something. Oh, I have been in a. I'm in a album. You know, I have a record and album, so they are going to be around saying, "Hey, I'm someone." <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. And, that's, uh, that's good. I think. Uh, well, I'm not able to sing, so uh, if I sing, maybe people are going to die. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, no, I, no. I, I, I can, I can imagine. Uh, if I was uh, a kid and able to sing, so in a chair, it would be super cool to be do, doing collaboration with a band. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for us as a band, I think that was one of the highlights on our career because, it, okay, it was of course the first time for me recording child child choir and and it was something else, like super inspiring and fun and yeah definitely one of the highlights yeah how many kids uh, are in this choir uh maybe 30 40 okay quite a I lot <laughs> don't, yeah 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 a lot more than on our actual <laughs> adult choir so to say yeah and uh, i have heard that uh, there are family and friend friends yes are yes singing. it's been since the second album we've kind of gathered our family families and friends and asked that okay would would you like to spend one two days recording with us and and i think it, it it's at this point they are already asking what we're gonna do with the next album because it's so much fun and yeah okay it, it's uh, it's usually a super long day i think we took 10 or 12 hours Okay. on this album for those choirs and super super hard because you're basically singing all the time except for the lunch break and pp breaks whatever yeah. but also but... you know now i how you pronounce uh, i know that i'm pronouncing wrong <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. I, it's one of those words that i will never learn to pronounce so for the people that are listening yeah, don't don't take it too personally. My my bad English. Um, it's it's it is yeah, what was... it is what it is. <laughs> Neither of, of us is a native English speaker, so I think we're yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, but the album is going to be released uh, through El, El Puerto Records. Yeah, it's the first time working with El, El, per El Puerto Records. Yeah, yeah. For the last two albums, we did with Reaper Entertainment. And the first one was with uh, Noise Art Records. Uh, and between this and previous album, we changed the label. And first time with them and going really smoothly. Super fun to work yeah. with them. I must say that before uh, uh, seeing the post about your album coming out with them, I didn't know about this record label. So this is something new for me. So I will check what uh, what other bands they are working with. Yeah, yeah, definitely you should check it out. Yeah, really interesting to see because it's impossible to follow and to know everything that is happening in the metal world. There is so many bands, so many record labels. So it's uh, it's interesting to find something new sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, I, I think I I listened. Uh, so seldomly metal music nowadays anymore but so for me <laughs> me it's like uh, now when i'm checking out all these spotify playlists and these and I'm like oh okay there's this and this band so i'm kind yeah. of learning quite a lot of new stuff too <laughs> yeah all the time there is something new yeah. but you have you you need to find the things that is right for you and uh, also the quality because uh, yeah. there is a lot of yeah. things, but not always there is quality. 
so it, it depends but uh, let's get back to the album and uh, um, how was the writing uh, a recording process of this album how long did it take and uh, uh, there were any any issues uh, or any difficulties uh, during the the process uh no i i usually uh i don't compose that much like constantly i mean uh especially now i haven't written any stuff in more than a year or something like that so i i take quite a long pauses uh and i do it in cycles so on this album i think the whole writing process took maybe one month one and a half months and uh yeah, and I I think the first kind of inspiration came when we would have had had a show uh, in Lahti, but we had to cancel it because all of us three vocalists got COVID. Hey, so we <laughs> we had to be at home for more than a week. So I just took my mini studio there and composed mainly almost all of the songs and then just fine tuning it after afterwards yeah and uh, when it comes okay you are not the one in charge about the lyrics but maybe you can tell us more about uh, this album uh, lyrically what's going on what's what's the story now if you can <laughs> say is, uh... <laughs> some yeah, something yeah, it's... not everything of course <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the funny thing is that I really don't know that much what to say about about the story was because I okay we play our own characters characters in the stories but I think that that's definitely something that Anne would have to answer. Okay. But, uh, I think uh, we're nearing something. Well, not the end but we're on maybe the end side of the story in some way let's put it like that and then okay then everybody can read the lyrics when the album is out yeah <laughs> we have to wait a few months for the, it's not that uh, that big of a deal so yeah, we yeah wait and then we will listen to the to the whole album and read yeah. the lyrics and enjoy the the journey um Talking about the gigs, there are any gigs coming up? Yes, at least one. And then we're uh, already planning on some more shows, of course. But uh, there's going to be an album release show in Hyvinkä in our hometown, which we're going to uh, publish quite soonish once we get the details done. But it's going to be mm -hmm. on the same weekend than, than the album release. So. Okay. Nice. And then in the past, you played also in other countries. Uh, what was the country that uh, um, you got more uh, fans uh, or more uh, feedback? There is any That's... country that was a bit more like... Into... Yeah, I think, uh, especially on our last tour, I think... It... Czech Republic was really, really good. I think it was almost a sold out show and they were screaming from the very beginning to the end of the shows. Uh, Italy was nice. But yeah, it was super difficult to say because there's always highlight after highlight. Yeah, so. yeah. And Germany, of course, because and especially because we like love to do shows so much. So yeah, even if you, even if you see one smiling face on the audience, that makes the whole thing. Yeah, true. And uh, when it comes uh, about shows, what's what's the 
the best thing in playing live? What's okay? The the smile on the face of a person, yeah. But uh, what's the feeling of being on the stage? What do you feel when you are playing there uh, in front of uh, many people? Uh, that's really hard to describe. It's some kind of confusion uh, between super absolute happiness and kind of a little bit of tingling that because life is also uh, always life. So I, I think the kind of a little bit danger here and there it makes the whole thing work and of course the audience because why why would we even do shows if we wouldn't want to perform to the oh. people so but yeah in, in the end i i think the main thing at least for me is like doing the shows playing for the people and meeting the fans which makes the whole thing uh work yeah yeah and then that, that also gives the strength to sit on the bus and you only see basically gas stations and <laughs> <laughs> the venues so uh, yeah it's uh, you know it's time. fun uh, that a lot of people thinks about uh, musician life uh, like this fancy life but in reality it's uh, not fancy it's a lot of work uh, uh, tiredness but uh, yes of course when you are on the stage and you are giving uh, uh, the energy and everything your heart to the people and you get their energy back is i think it's yeah. uh, everything you need it it makes you full let's yeah say. yeah definitely and especially if you think that you're maybe doing one hour slots every night and the rest uh, of the day it's only like waiting or <laughs> sitting in the bus or doing loading and load out so yeah but, Totally worth it. I uh, I loved every second. Yeah, um, you play also in other bands. Uh, there is a new band, Emperage, and uh, you released now three singles. One came out yesterday. Yes. Uh, tell us more about this band. Yeah, that's something that we've been brewing for quite a while. I think it started that. Uh, the guitarists and the drummer were just spending time during COVID because there wasn't any shows to do. So they were like planning on just going to the rehearsal place and jamming and having fun. And then at, at some point I talked with Jarno, who's also a guitarist in Lost in Grey okay. and one of the Emperor, Emperor Age, Emperage uh, guitarists. Uh, uh, and he was telling me to me that yeah we've got a bunch of songs and maybe you should record them and we booked a date here in the studio and then in the end I ended up <laughs> on the keyboards too and mixing and mastering the whole stuff but yeah we've got a bunch of songs already lined up for release and next month we're gonna do some more recording so okay are you working just on singles or are you working to an album? Uh, I think we're aiming for an album at some point, but for now we're just releasing single by single for a while, but you never know. I, I think we're now yeah. we're in a good so you spirit. Go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. We might uh, throw in some surprises, but we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Okay. And there is any plan to play live with this band or it's just yes, a... yes yeah. definitely okay so let's wait to hear something something more so yeah yeah we'll see let's see, let's see if i'm able to to be at any gigs uh, of uh, one one of your bands <laughs> yeah yeah that let, would let's be see. lovely I, I i will i will try also to get photos uh, because i improve science uh, because we met in 2013 in Pori. Yes, absolutely when you play right. with uh, Embassy of Silence. It's been, it's been a while, <laughs> and back then Quite I was a while. Just, yeah, I was just at the beginning of uh, this uh, journey that is uh, always a growing journey. It's always uphill, 
and uh, I remember taking terrible photos. So <laughs> I have no good photos of that gig. And also it was, uh, I did uh, with Ian as the first interview of my life. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, That's so cool. It was, um, well, uh, not uh, my best interview, I must say, but every time you improve, you improve with time, with experience. Also now, you know, sometimes I'm like lost what I have to ask, but I'm going with improvisation. That's, that's something that I have learned. You have to study. But then you can go with improvisation. But yeah, uh, yeah definitely. And yeah. you shouldn't be too hard on yourself because yeah. it's you have to start somewhere, like more than ten right. years ago. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's been a while since we met. So it will be nice to see you live again. But let's see what happened. But uh, let's talk about Embassy of Silence because I, I think I haven't heard for a while from from the band. So is Embassy of Silence still going on? What's what's going uh, on? I, I don't actually know. I, I, I know that uh, Tero, uh, the main composer guy, uh, he's been busy with Kallomäki. Yeah. And I think they, they're they doing some Satwe gigs now also. But you you never know. I uh, he's a productive guy too, so yeah, <laughs> it might already happen next week. But uh, uh, I think I left Embassy of Silence maybe 2014 or something. Okay. To fo focus on Lost in Grey. Uh, okay. So, but I know that they continued still for a while, and I actually was the mixing engineer on one of their shows which was okay. quite weird uh, to be on the kind of wrong side of the yeah, <laughs> stage yeah. but it was it was super fun yeah you know i didn't know that you you are not in the band anymore so this is a new for me <laughs> a news for me uh, <laughs> yeah. also i went you know when i i did my research for for today, I also went so, on internet and brought uh, Embassy of Silence and your name. And it seems like that you are still the present uh, keyboardist of the band, <laughs> according to yeah, internet. Uh... So <laughs> I was maybe someone uh, <laughs> need to to do if they are watching this interview. They they need to to do some modification. <laughs> Or it could be <laughs> some a of the pages <laughs> that you can find information, but whatever. <laughs> Let's get to talk about your studio, the Grey Realm Rehalm Studio. Was I pronouncing that right? Yeah, yeah, right enough. <laughs> uh, I I don't even know how to pronounce it myself. <laughs> so uh, you are uh, the audio in engineer and producer, am I right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, when did you start to to doing this studio work? And is, uh, is the studio your own studio? Yeah, or... it's my own studio. I I've had this place from God damn time flies so fast. Maybe it was two thousand eighteen or something like that. Uh -huh. No, I was lying. 2000 and... Yeah, yeah, 18, 18. Since then, we moved, moved to Rajamäki, Finland, in here. Uh, before that, we had just a smaller studio uh, where we also recorded everything since the beginning of Lost in Grey. But yeah. yeah, I've been doing this since then, and enjoying <laughs> yeah. and of course it's super handy to have uh, my own studio to record the albums yeah. and i can stay here for as long as i like and sleep on the couch and <laughs> work we can much. see from uh, from your background that uh, is really uh, cozy really comfy it's, it seems like the the around yeah i think that was my main goal because i i spent here so much time that i I just wanted to be cozy, and I was laugh laughing to people that my first goal was to make it cozy as possible and looking like me. And then I started thinking about the gear, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but 
but yeah, yeah, it's been fun, and I think I've put a lot more effort to, to the control room than our actual house. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you spend many hours there in the in the in the in the room, then it makes sense that you want everything to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Perfect yeah. for you, yeah. Yeah, no, working... of course, because yeah, uh, I'm uh, doing a lot of composing here too, so so it makes sense to that it should be inspiring, and of yeah. course uh, for the clients too, because yeah. So it's... how many how many clients uh, do you have? Uh, more or less really hard to say because it, it depends a lot if i'm doing uh on albums or when i i have more time to do actual <laughs> work mm -hmm. uh, but uh, maybe 14 15 okay 40 yeah. 40 50 uh since this day and of course i do a lot of like live sound engineer stuff too maybe yeah. half half of the actual work is that but yeah are you do doing only digital recording uh yeah mainly mainly yeah yeah uh, i've got this one uh, old stereo reel to reel thing which i've used for mastering sometime but yeah mainly digital but uh with the help of analog equipment okay so nice. to say yeah yeah you know it was a uh, science i know pretty much nothing about studios so <laughs> how the studio work uh, maybe i know the the minimal but i it's been a while since I have been in a studio and I have never recorded nothing. Oh, well, I have, but not in a studio. <laughs> I was <laughs> doing other things in a studio, uh, but that no one is uh, thinking weird things in a studio, <laughs> just normal music things. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, um, but yeah, uh, I remember talking with uh, Ansi about uh, the differences. Uh, so it's always uh, like open-minding to know how it works uh, behind, you know, behind an album, behind a song, uh, because I, I have not knowledge about that. So very interesting to, to get to know how people works and uh, what's the yeah process. definitely. And I, I I think for every let's say sound engineer producer, I think the most important thing is to find your own thing so to say so, this, so which makes you you because you you always have to be inspired of the work and kind of find new new ways for working and and i, I think uh, regarding ansi's work i think it's fabulous it's like super inspiring and i would definitely love to visit his studio someday and uh, but uh, for me, I, I think similar kind of work flow would be, at least for me, quite difficult because I handle shitload of tracks like <laughs> always. But but definitely, I've been thinking that it could be a nice option to have a fully analog possibility to record too. But it's at least for these. This place, this is too small. <laughs> small yeah, yeah. It, so. so there is but, a lot yeah. of things to think. Also, uh, if you are not used to use a certain uh, product, a certain uh, um, technology, let's say, uh, then you have to, before to learn how it works. Then you can start to work with uh, with it. So it's. It's not all black and white, let's say. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. But okay, the, the, basically the things are, you do similar things if you record di digital or analog. So it doesn't really matter because you still have the same kind of knobs that you turn and you still have to record this thing 
to this place. So, <laughs> yeah. So the principles are quite the same, but uh, like how you do it's a bit different. Different. Yeah. yeah. So now let's talk ab about the metal in general. And uh, how did you get into metal music? Uh, I think. Of course, the kind of obvious stuff like Metallica, Iron Maiden, uh, those were, I think, the first first kind of metal bands for me. But uh, and at the same time, I was doing a lot of because I've been composing basically since since I was something like third grader or something like that. Uh, and at the same time, I. I while I was listening to Metallica and Iron Maiden, I was still doing some house dance music stuff with my computer. So that kind of, I were, I wouldn't kind of say I was a metalhead back back in the day, but uh, I was into the music. But I, I think the first kind of bigger awakening if you could say that was when i heard children of bodum's first album that was the kind of whoa this is the shit and then you kind of start finding a lot more similar kind of well not similar but like a bit more aggressive stuff and yeah, yeah. but yeah it's been when <laughs> 30, 30 years already. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I was thinking since you say that you were not a metalhead back back in the time when I was a kid, I didn't know nothing about metal. So <laughs> and there was no social media, Spotify and those things. So you were listening what what the radio was playing or uh, what on the TV, if if there was some uh, music sh channel, then you were uh, watching that and you were listening to whatever it was. Uh, and of course, um, most of the radios and uh, the the music channel, they, they, they were just uh, playing a more, more, you know, popular uh, pop, pop songs. Uh, and then uh, back yeah, in the 90s, yeah. it was, uh, Eurodance was a big thing. And, um, I think that everyone uh, that that is uh, not uh, too young, let's say <laughs> millennials, let's say, uh, are uh, they, everyone has this uh, guilty pleasure to listen uh, to listen to Eurodance, start an Eurodance <laughs> song, and you just start to to feel to feel it. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, no one should be ashamed to tell because um, you can be listening to the most dark music and still enjoying also the most bubbling one. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, and uh, <laughs> that's usually what happens on tour buses because <laughs> nobody wants to listen to metal music anymore when you've had your day full of it. So <laughs> then the yeah. Euro dance starts. Then you get bum bum. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All kind of bailandos and <laughs> the basic songs that they ju they just are so easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Do you don't have to think too much. <laughs> but um, best ones. But, yeah, let's get back to the to the metal for a moment. <laughs> um, what was the the first album that you both? That's a really hard question. If you remember, even if it's not metal, maybe if it's something else. I think one of the first kind of CDs was a compilation from Iron Maiden. Was it Best of the Beast? Which is maybe the best compilation album ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but for like 
first album ever i have no idea it must have been something really horrible <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> i would love to check it out if i still have it because yeah. i usually <laughs> really don't throw away any music what i buy or get so yeah i think i should should have it but i i think it's well, most probably it's been some cassette yeah yeah i think i i have no idea where all my cassettes went <laughs> i'm scared that they went to the trash at some point but i i don't know it's sad <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> they, <definitely. laughs> if they went to the trash <laughs> let's hope not but at some point when i go back to italy for a holiday maybe i have to check where is all my stuff because also all my um, cds are there and there are so many so i have to to grab everything and take them home <laughs> yeah definitely but um what was the first uh, rock or metal gigs that you ever attend i think it might have been him at some point in the 90s maybe because i was living in nivala uh, Ostrobotnia and there's this legendary venue Tuiskula unfortunately I think it was closed just like a month ago or something like that but uh, well le legendary because even Metallica was performing is there was it 90, uh, 84 or something like that but but yeah, it must have been him or Nightwish there or Synergy or something. I went to quite a lot of shows there, but hey. cannot recall, but it was the first. Yeah, but let's let's say that it was him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most probably it could have been that, but yeah, actually yeah. It would be interesting to check it out. <laughs> yeah. There is a any band, any metal band that is uh, your favorite or the one that you got more insp inspiration? Uh, yeah, that's really hard. Of course, uh, everybody thinks it's okay. It, it must be Nightwish because you have female vocalists in your band. And of course, it is one of the most in inspiring bands because I, I, I love like Finnish metal music, which is... Well, quite obvious, but there's so many because, and I, I I think it changes from year to year. It's at some point it was Iron Maiden, and some some point it was Nightwish, and some point it was Children of Bottom, and but I drew so many inspirations from all over the places, so it's really difficult to say. And I think nowadays it, it's the most inspiring stuff for me is uh, movie scores and game scores and that kind of stuff so yeah yeah have you ever been into musical music yeah i i think and I, I we've at, at least in my point of view i think we have a few parts here and there with lost in gray also which is kind of musical ish ish yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in general i think there's just just a few musicals that i i like so I think, what are those i think chicago was good and and the one that i can cannot figure out the name which is convenient i think i can remember it at some point but not now <laughs> tomorrow but, tomorrow we will be, we'll be yeah, like yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> yeah i'll send you a weird okay. video that message was tomorrow. The, the music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah just a few not not that yeah. much and of course rocky horror picture show that's one of the best ever yeah true yeah i i was talking with another band uh, uh, other men, band, band members so 
two guys from Temper Temperance into two different interviews I did with Marco Pastorino and uh, Michele Guaito. The end. They, they, with both, we had this uh, musical moment uh, talking about musical things. <laughs> uh, so, so Symes uh, also their last album was quite uh, theatrical and uh, musically. Uh, so that that's interesting to to hear if uh, some one of the band members are into musical because then it it makes sense it makes more sense why the music sound in a certain way so yeah, that's why yeah, i yeah. was asking you about the music thing yeah i i think that on top of me i think emily and anne uh, the lady vocalists of the band uh, I think I I know that they are really into musicals, so, yeah. <laughs> so it makes so sense. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, and of course, there because there's a certain kind of drama uh, elements that we like to do. So it's kind of, of course, obvious that we like this kind of well theatrical way of yeah. representing yeah. our our music and story. Yeah. But now let's get my random topic jar and let's see what we are going to talk today. Let's hope that <laughs> it's something that is not always not always the same. Sometimes there are some topics that are more common, but I feel this this one may be interesting. Movies. Uh, so, what's your favorite movie? There's so many, but I think. Since Inception was released, I think it's been on the top three yeah. all, this, all the time. And of course, Interstellar, it's a ridiculously good movie. Uh, Django Unchained, or was it just Django? Well, the one. Uh, That those those might be the ones which are my top three now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is any kind of movies that uh, you when someone say let's watch this movie and you are oh no 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 <laughs> a big no for you. Uh, I think maybe <clears throat> some some Disney cartoon stuff. Okay. <laughs> that that's maybe not, not my cup of tea but okay uh, in the end if i uh end up watching those those are hilarious and super funny and but but i i wouldn't personally like suggest it but yeah i i like more kind of dystopian stuff and that kind of yeah. things yeah. okay and do you watch the movies uh, on uh, Netflix or a platform like that? Or do you use DVD or do you use uh, VHS? What What's your way to watch the movies? Uh, I think we have a, quite a big bunch of DVDs and we do rent, still rent DVDs from the library. <laughs> okay. Uh, but but we, I think I, I watch quite a lot of HBO nowadays and that, yeah, that's yeah. basically the only streaming service that I use for uh, movie and series yeah but yeah I, I think Netflix at, uh, we had it at some point in our home but I, I think at least at then it was not for me there wasn't that good of a selection, selection. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, not always, uh, you know, Netflix, sometimes I watch something, but when it comes to movies, I think that I watch Gremlis during Christmas time, because it's a, it's a <laughs> Christmas movie, so I yeah. had to watch, I, I, I love Gremlis, it's it just so I don't know for when you watch nowadays yeah or all those um, 
you know, scene that were like supposed to be scary. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make nothing. And it, it didn't, uh, even when I was a child. I, I'm a horror <laughs> kid. I have I grew up watching uh, horror movies with uh, my mom since I was four years old. So <laughs> I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm really critical when it's uh, horror movies. Uh, yeah, is it scary enough? <laughs> yeah, and you know, most of the nowadays uh, horror movies, they are all the... You know, you know beforehand what is going to happen. So there is not that that jumping thing. So I'm when someone say, "Oh, this is so good," then I watch and it's like it's not good. It's not the same thing like the movies <laughs> from the eighties and early nineties. That yeah, there were okay. If we think about all the special effect, they were not that great, but th there was this this uh, shiver <laughs> let's say yeah yeah and i i think especially nowadays uh, if you think about special effects from 80s uh, i i think it, it's kind of a the thing in the movies because yeah. you it, it yeah it just makes makes it work <laughs> yeah but yeah i think that i watch gremlins because it was about gremlins not horror movie everything um <laughs> and it was a uh, Amazon, or it was not Netflix, but we have all three platforms since uh, we are into series that are on different platforms. <laughs> but yeah, that, it was on that. Yeah. No, I don't know which, which one was, but it was not on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. I got confused. <laughs> But now let's get to another topic so I don't get confused with movie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see this one. This is not the first time it's been a few times. Fears. So what, what is uh, your fear? Something that you are scared, something that... High places. <laughs> Quite a lot. Hey. You wouldn't see me ever climbing into a let's say a tower or mast that's definitely no no <laughs> okay and of course uh, maybe i'm scared that what would happen that if i would just someday wake up with no inspiration towards arts anymore because yeah. they, it's such of a big deal in, in my life so might be that yeah yeah i think for artists that the inspiration is is the most Im important thing your your muse so yeah yeah definitely and yeah. but at, the, at least for me uh, uh, as long as there's nature and beautiful sceneries i think <laughs> i'm at least good with yeah. the inspiration right? so. well being a, a fin in Finland, it's easy to have ins inspiration with the beauty, nature that uh, surround. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still like to travel one thousand kilometers more north <laughs> with that. But maybe that that's just me. Yeah. So, do you get always your inspiration from the nature, or there is also other things? Uh, of course, it depends. I, I, I feel that I kind of gather the inspiration material, so to say, when uh, because I'm usually traveling every year in northern Norway, uh, Finnish Lapland, here and there for at least a month every, every year. So, but of course, because I don't compose then or do any art then but i then i just lock myself into the studio or home with the covid or <laughs> something like that and but of course you yeah but that's inspiring place for me to kind of gather the ideas and think about doing music but yeah of course yeah. I, I i like to enjoy the nature then and not 
carry all kind of keyboards or guitars with me. Yeah. Okay, nice. But now let's uh, go into the to the most important thing about this interview, that is pizza. So yes. <laughs> do you like pizza? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay. What's your your favorite pizza? Uh I think it have to be something with salami kebab jalapenos okay. <laughs> which is not maybe the most traditional let's say italian pizza <laughs> but yeah, yeah i i i like it well quite a lot it has to be yeah. salty and tasty strong taste yeah. there with yeah. the jalapeno giving that that kick <laughs> yeah extra bite yeah <laughs> but where did you eat the, the best pizza ever Oh, that's a really tough one, actually. There was this Italian restaurant in Helsinki where it was ridiculously good pizzas, but I don't remember the name. Uh, and <laughs> this year favorite has been in uh, Inari. Papa and Bob. <laughs> okay, <laughs> when you you're, when you've been eating like canned for food for two weeks, the pizza tastes quite good. Like paradise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And where did you eat the worst pizza? Worst. Yeah. <laughs> there has to be quite many many worst pizzas ever okay it was in our hometown i won't say the uh restaurant's name but uh, i think my spouse got some kind of food poisoning from there and uh, i had a thorough show coming up the next day so i was like looking forward to not having <laughs> any symptoms and luckily didn't have so that's definitely one of the worst pizzas yeah yeah i see you know it came in my mind the uh, uh, first time that i visit finland uh it was 2000 wait 2008 yeah i was in helsinki and um yeah, the last day before I, I was leaving uh, early in the morning. So the last the, the day the day before leaving, I went to a restaurant and and eat the same food that I ate a few days before because it was good. It was some curry chicken. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but it it was good. So then I ate. And then I remember waking up in the middle of the night. I woke up and I threw up everything on oh, the, on the yeah, bed. <laughs> then I was, oh, I tried to clean because I was feeling bad for the cleaner coming the next day. Gladly there were two beds. So I went, I went to the other bed. But in the morning when I woke up, it went, it came out. <laughs> and there was, a, there was this carpet on the floor and it went on the carpet then i was trying to clean up and then i was on a hurry because the taxi was coming to take me oh, damn, <laughs> and the taxi the taxi, the taxi left the tax uh, the taxi left without me i remember running down uh, with my pyjama on my hand and uh, all my stuff and the taxi was not there then i was in panic what i'm going to do because it was uh, 6 in the morning on her on earlier even and then I was, oh my God, there is no people here. And also the hotel was a bit weird. Uh, they at the reception just uh, from eight in the morning to six in the morning, something like this. Ah, uh, yeah. So you so can't was... get any help. <laughs> yeah, there. what I'm going to do. So then I start to walk. Let's see if there is any person that can call the taxi because I didn't know the taxi number. <laughs> I Thinking about it, it was so, so bad. But then there was a taxi uh, uh, what's that? Puzaki, a taxi 
place they're close and there were there were no taxi but then i was waiting there then there was a lady with the dog on the other side and i was okay now i'm going there asking her to to call the the taxi but in that moment a taxi arrived and i took the taxi and the taxi saved my <laughs> my travel <laughs> but it, <laughs> so in the end all good yeah it ended did accept that uh, back then uh, Fina Finair was giving a uh, warm food. So when everybody opened the food, I was like dying, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it ended good. And uh, then I was I have to to get back to Finland. So then I did other travels. <laughs> that that was a story that <laughs> now you know and people know no one no one cares actually but um, i had this urge to tell the story yeah and lucky oh. you, you weren't too traumatized about finland because you came back <laughs> yeah that's something that uh that will stay forever in my mind always if i feel that someone is or if i uh, smell carry then it it reminds me of that <laughs> Of that, yeah, yeah. of that episode, but yeah, it was so long time ago that it's fine. <laughs> but let's get back to the pizza because uh, now there is a question. The the question. The uh, question. Yeah, the you know people in the world are divided in two: ananas on pizza or pineapple pineapple on pizza and. Pineapple actually is the right pronunciation. Pineapple, yeah, pineapple. on pizza and uh, pineapple no. So, what do you think? Does pineapple belong to pizza? Not in my pizza, at least. <laughs> yeah, that's... I I can eat it if it's there, but I wouldn't. It's not my choice of toppings. Yeah, I always say if it's not on my pizza, it's fine. And if it's on my pizza, I take it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm extreme. <laughs> but people put on pizza whatever they love. So Yeah. If everybody's it different. Bananas or... <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, there is so much... I must say that uh, when I moved to Finland, uh, I was a bit shocked that uh, people were putting peach on pizza. Yeah, that was I, I that was understand. even even weirder than the the ananas thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, wouldn't put that on my pizza either. So, yeah, but apparently it's a thing for people. So, yeah, if they why like, not? why yeah. not? Just put yeah. whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your, your food, your choice. <laughs> yeah, it's a free country, so. Yeah. But now let's take the question that the previous guest left for you. So, do you choose strawberry or banana? Banana. Banana. So you are a banana person. Yes, completely yeah. bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I will choose strawberry always. You know, also when it comes to some alcoholic drinks, it tends to be strawberry. Strawberry is the the thing that I, I always say, yeah, I can taste it. Yeah, I can get it. <laughs> yeah, it's good too. Good too. Yeah. Definitely. Banana, I don't know what happened uh, with me, but when I was a kid, I was eating banana. And then growing up, I don't, I, I, I'm saying, you know, I don't dislike it, but I don't eat it. If if there is nothing else, I'm going to eat banana, but I'm not going to buy it. I don't know why. So you have to taste the classic treat, but you can make uh, with a bonfire that you put a foil in the banana and put some chocolate in it and some mint mint to, mint liquor on top of it. Yeah, I have. I, I think that someone uh, <laughs> someone did once uh, the banana with the chocolate. Uh, I think I taste it. But uh, yeah, if someone is offering that, uh, I'm I'm fine. I can eat, but <laughs> not not my first choice. But yeah. now it's your turn to leave a question, whatever question, to for the next guest. Yes, 
I would ask the next guest to name three things uh, which make him or her happy at the moment. Nice one. Really a good one. I'm writing down. I'm, so I'm such a hippie. <laughs> it's a good one. Nice. So here we are. We are at the end of this of this episode interview, of, uh, how you want to call it. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for being my guest. It was really a pleasure to to have you here. And uh, I'm now waiting for the album. <laughs> Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, Thank you so much. It, it was a pleasure and uh, it was super fun. Nice yeah. chatting with you. Would you like to say something to people that are watching, listening this uh, this episode of Metal Pizza? Yeah, definitely. Uh, go to the shows, buy, buy the albums, merchandise, whatever, whenever it's possible. Okay, you cannot go to every show because it's expensive, but support the bands and what you like and enjoy the live music. Thank you. <laughs>